How's it going guys? Matt, MTG Onich here. I know I said I was going to only open one box of Kaldheim, but we're going for box number two. It's been a while. I really like the set. And uh, yeah, I need a video for Friday. So I do have a new little camera set up, so we're going to test that out too. It's kind of the point of this video is to just test my little uh, camera dongle. So I think we're going to be doing some EDH games here pretty soon on the channel. So subscribe if you're excited about that or leave a comment or something. Because, yeah, they're going to be happening. Not sure exactly when. All right, let's get this cracked open. Let's talk about Kalheim. I know, a lot of news in the magic world. Strixhaven coming out. Everybody's spoiling a little bit of the Modern Horizons 2. Well, starting to. So, yeah, I don't know. I feel like since I do one video a week, maybe I should talk about news. But I don't think I'm going to do that yet. But for now, your victory has been foretold. What is a set booster? Okay, all right. So I did a video a little while back about the speculation of Kaldheim, and I meant all that. But one thing I overlooked is that when comparing this to Simcar Rising, these boxes, you don't you don't get the expedition. There's no expedition in here, but it seems like there's more set cards. The, the packs seem better, but no expedition. So I don't know. It's a little bit of a toss-up which, uh, which boxes will be have better long-term value. Which one do you guys think will have better long-term value? Kaldheim? Or is Indicar Rising? I personally think it's going to be Kaldheim, but it's hard to tell. Those expeditions are a real treat. They can be some uh, bet plans and all kinds of cool stuff, but I guess you can... I don't know. Can you still get them in these? We'll find out, I guess. All right, let's get to cracking. Oh, I'm loving this new setup. It's so much easier to work with. So much easier to work with. How did I do without it? All right. Let's see. Oh, there's the old Toski art. Okay, I gotta make sure I keep right here, right in the center. All right, keep the packs up there. Get a little organization system going on here. Make sure this doesn't have any. Okay, I should probably have a playmat down, but okay. All right, of course the commons. Lots of commons. Oh wait, you know these don't always have a ton of commons. So there's commons. Some uncommons. Oh, they will create a bunch of elves. Uncommon. Blizzard Brawl. Oh, we got Haunting Voyage. Interesting. Not sure if it's exactly good, but it's interesting. I gotta read this card. I haven't actually fully read this. Six mana sorcery. Choose a creature type. Return up to two creature cards of that type from your graveyard to the battlefield. If this was foretold, return all creature cards of that type from your graveyard to the battlefield instead. Interesting, not bad. Um, see if we can get it to focus here at least once. If I get real close, yeah. Yeah, that could, that could have some serious implications. Really expensive though, really expensive. It's a mythic. And we got us a snow creature of no real significance. It's a common and a mammoth growth foil. Put that there. So I guess we'll do like a mythic stack foils. Whatever little arena card there. All right, let's keep going. So I'm liking the way this this seems to focus really good on the table, but I guess we'll have to play around with it some because it's not exactly doing the best once I show the cards. And I don't know. We'll, we'll deal. We'll deal. Another beautiful art card. So art cards are super cool. I don't know if there's really any point to them though. Wither crown. All right, Yarl, Feed the Serpent, and here we go, the Uncommon Soul of Coming. I like this counterspell. It's a decent counterspell. Here we go. If I hold right here. All right, here we go. It's the Retribution. Okay. Sorry, I got something running in the background on my computer, so I'm going to click Next. All righty, there we go. All right, Fjord's Retribution. Not a bad card. Easy to blow it out, though. I played a lot against that Retribution and Arena. And if you just kill the Angel, it doesn't do a whole lot. Common. Little Bird Strider there. This thing is busted. The Bird Strider is busted and limited. Absolutely busted. Not so playable otherwise. Right, let's get this pack open. Art, I 
I've got to, you got to love the art in this series. I set it on the first box and every time I look at the art on this set, it just stays amazing. Like the art on this, super nice, really cool. It looks like a Bob Ross. Let's put that in the land pile. Yeah, I don't know if better. Old Mass Vandal, common. We got us a Dwarven Hammer. Forging the Tyrite Sword, solid and common. Gilded Assault thing, and the Old Growth Troll. Pretty cool card. What do you guys think of this card? I mean, he's a 4-4, four, four, 3 mana. He's got Trample, and he comes back. Just does so much. Pretty decent, decent pull. Replication Ring. Another really interesting card. And Struggle for Skimfar Foil. Alright, what are we going to pull? You know what we're always hoping for. We're hoping for some bomb from the list. Or uh, the dragon. Of course, we want the dragon. And what else? What else would be freaking sweet? Um, oh, yeah, the, the Phyrexian, what's his name? It's like, I feel like if I say it, I'm going to spoil it though. Okay, bound in gold. Let's get through these commons. Only a few commons there. Crush the weak. Magia. It's Magia. Focus. Oh, whatever. You know who Magia is. Stronghold. These strongholds are pretty interesting. Some of them are good. Battle of Frost and Fire. Four damage to each non-giant. Not bad. A little board wipe. Oh, that's uh, that's the rare. And we got a Toski. Another great pull. A card that fits in every commander deck with green. Um, something I didn't notice the first time I read him. This is any creature. Any creature you control deals damage. You draw a card. So he's basically like an enchantment that just sits out there. Sort of. And we got Herald. In the special border. Jeez, that art. That's so cool. Alright. We'll put that, uh, I don't know, put a little pile there. Special border. It's really just an uncommon. We'll just throw it in the uncommons. It's fine. Alright. What else we can pull? You guys that know me, should I put this Haunting Voyage in my demon deck? I'm not sure it would be all that great. I mean, Getting it off for seven and bringing every demon back could be an absolute bomb, but it's going to be a dead card otherwise. It's a lot of mana, so probably won't, but... Alright. Alright, we're going to skip. We're going to try to go a little faster. And we're just going to colossally plow through these cards. Waking the trolls. Wait, there was only one uncommon in this pack. Like, one uncommon. That's weird. Another interesting card. Oh, Magda. Magda's super cool. I like Magda. Cleaving Reaper. Pretty strong card. I don't know. It's okay. It's okay. And we got a Foil Demon Bolt. That's a nice one. A playable foil. Oh, what do we got here? Something from the list? It's the Herbal Herb Panther. What do we do? We sack it, destroy something blocking it, sack it, and other things, get Spirit of the Night. Oh, this guy. Oh, man, I remember that. That's, that's old school. Okay, we got a list pile there. That's a weird thing to put on the list. Do they have everything else from that on the list? Are the other involved cards there? I don't know. I feel like they should, you know? What art do we have here? Oh, we have this card. Is that Angar? Oh, that's such a cool picture. Oh, God, I love the art. I just want, like, some full-framed... I want to hang these on my wall, like full big-frame pictures. I would, I would do it. Definitely. Slap it right there in the man cave. All right, so we got Mystic Reflection. All right. Oh, this thing. Yeah, there's some interesting potential combos with this. Choose a non-legendary. Well, it's an instant. Two mana, choose non-legendary. Next time, one more creatures or planeswalkers. ETB this turn, they enter as copies of its chosen creature. So there's like two crazy things you can do with this. You can, if someone's about to bring out a bunch of tokens or whatever, you can instant this and say, nope, they're all squirrels or something. So just choose something really little. Or, well, it's got a foretell one too. Or you can make all your creatures something insanely big. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Really interesting card. I feel like there's something probably blow out some games with that. Ooh, the Axe Guard and Foil. Nice. That's cool. So shiny. Oh, look at that. The art card signed. I don't know what card that is, but it's pretty cool. Maybe I'll put that to the side. I feel like it's a special art. 
All right, let's go. Let's keep it to commons. All right, we got Paul the Imposter. Decent. Rise of the Dead. Dread. Rise of the Dread Marn. I don't know, interesting card. Some decent speculation on this. I feel like uh, it could be good in the right deck. A foil Pilfering Hawk. All right. Coffee break. All right, there we go. So super cool thing. I can just pause this recording and continue it like it's nothing. OBS has that feature. Gotta love it. One of my favorite features when I'm doing videos. All right. Look at these guys. What the heck even are those? All right. Foil tree line. Smashing success. Better demolish. Uh, Demon Bolt. Okay, let's see. Binding of the Old Gods. This should be a rare. This card's like way better than almost all the other uh, whatever sagas in this set. But just uncommon. Really good uncommon. Oh, Toroff. Welcome to the party. What, we got a little ding up there? Yeah. Pre-dinged. Well, whatever. It happens, I guess. Out of the pack with a ding. Actually, he's a mythic, too. I actually need this guy for deck. Prepare to be pwned. All right. Oh, and a foil. That's a foil rare. The Bears of Litjara. These recent foils, have you guys noticed? Unless it's a full art foil, the foil doesn't mean anything. They're no longer worth more. Sometimes they're even worth less because of the curling factor. So we're just going to throw that in the regular rare pile. I'm not really considering that. Like, if you look up this card and then you look it up in foil, they're probably worth, like, exactly the same. Because people... People don't want those foils that curl for their deck. Because why would you? It just... It's it's a marked card. It should be... It's probably illegal. Alright. Soul first mine. Uh, Narfi. It's not uncommon. Nothing special there, but cool. Ice bind. Ooh, the Icebreaker Kraken coming out of the ice. This card is cool. I know, 12 mana, but by the time you bring him out, he's probably only going to be like 6 mana or so. I mean, there's potential for this to be in a really decent place. Hmm, I don't know. Too expensive, really. Oh, Bergy with the special art. Oh, that's, that's sweet. Bergy's another super strong card in this set. Probably one of the better in the set in the long run. Just the Wombo... Of being able to keep adding mana and play and stuff, and it's just so good for Storm. And I want to, let's check out the backside of this uh, Harnfell, Horn of Bounty. Decent side, too, that could come in handy. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. All right. Troll and a Bind the Monster. Foil. Wow, I'm pretty happy with these pulls already. Like... I mean, there hasn't been any bombs, but we got Toroff, we got Bergy, we got some other... What else did we get? I don't know. I guess that's about it. Bergy and Toroff are probably the big ones. X. Try not to... I don't know if I caused that ding in that last one. And Toroff, it's possible. You guys will have to let me know. Did I open that pack way wrong? These packs, so I feel like you just gotta manhandle them apart. I might find a different method. Might get a little box cutter or something. All right, more right. King Narfi's betrayal. Oh, Cosmina. Oh, that uh, Narfi's betrayal is a rare. Cosmina's a rare. Frostbite. Let's look at the back of Cosmina. It's the almond keel. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. A little frostbite there, and a battlefield raptor foil. Kind of love the foil on the red explosion art. Okay. Because so I always do this. I always pull at the top here while gripping here. And that, that might not be the best method. I think it's causing something there. So what are you supposed to do? Oh, these ones have a peel. Or uh, these ones have a tag. But even that, like, ganks against the corners there a little bit. I know the camera's not focusing right. But I feel like there's no, like, consistent way to open these where there's zero risk unless I get some, like, scissors and just cut the top or something. Maybe they'll do that. Maybe they'll do that. Because I would hate to get, like, the Phyrexian Vorinclex and then have it dinged at the top. Oh, that would be such... Oh, it'd be such a kick in the teeth, you know? 
All right, so we got Foil Snow Forest. Cool. Gotta love it. Who's that? Who's back there? All right. Cinderheart Joint. Gold Vein Pick. Okay, a common. Oh, probably one of the best commons in the set. Super cool and super cool equipment. I really like it. I mean, it's not like OP or anything, but it's just cool. It's not bad. It's actually playable. All right, Absorb Identity. Blessing of Frost. Ooh, the Pathway. Bark Water Pathway. Tide Channel. Gotta love the blue. Uh, blue green one. Igna Rune Eyes. Decent Uncommon. Wither Crown Foil. And Commander Cube Fortel thing. Alright, I'm gonna go grab a pair of scissors so I don't risk dinging anything. Alright, here we go. So I got some scissors. These are like my uh, scissors I use for everything, so they're not the greatest. Okay, so let's try this. So we got a pretty good amount of room there to just cut. Okay. So yeah, I feel a lot better about that already. Okay, now we got still an area. So there we go. Now there's like no risk of damage doing it that way. All right, see so what we got. Start with the art. Oh, nice. Another gold lane pick. Ben the Fangbearer. Rune of Mortality. Cyclone Summoner. Interesting card. Not bad. Has its place in those giant decks. There's Major. Arnie slays the troll foil. Cool. I'm gonna get up, get up in there. Yeah. All right. Okay, let's do it again. And these scissors are really dull. <laughs> uh, I've had them forever. Okay. Start with the art. That's cool. Who is she? What's wrong with her face? All right. There we go. Whoa. I'm just looking at the blur. The absolute. There we go. Okay. Dual strike. Interesting card. What do you guys think of dual strike? It's kind of like a fork. Except not quite as good, I guess. Giant's Fury. Invasion of the Giants. Certland Frostpire. We just got a giant pack here. And Angar. So many giants in this pack. Imagine getting this in a draft. You're like, which giant thing do I take? Search of Greatness. Spirit of Alderguard. And a foil common axe guard. Alright, keep going. Uh, Alright. Stick to the method. Stick to the method. I'm going to risk damaging a Vorinclex. Or dragon, or whatever. Check out that guy. Is, it, is that Broken Bow? Old Arnie? What's in his head? He's got something stuck in his head. Ah, okay. That looks a little painful. Alright. Only three commons. And then we're straight to the uncommons here. Got Glimpse, Frostpire, Salt, Frost Dogger, Avalanche Collar, Oh, Resplendent Marshal. Decent, decent. I don't know if it's got any value, but I feel like it's a cool card. It's got a decent stat block and some commons. All the rootless you. Yeah, I'm talking about you. Yeah, talking about you. When it dies, search your library for a creature with power or toughness six or greater. Reveal it, put it in your hand. That's actually not the worst. I mean, it's not good. It's not bad either. Okay, Resplendent Marshal, though. It's a 3-3 three, three for 3, it's flying, it does a bunch of other stuff. ETB, exile something from your yard, put a plus one plus one count on each creature that shares a type with the one you exiled. Alright. Okay, look at that. Nice. Very nice, solid open. That's the way to do it. Foil Swamp. Frostbite, Ghetto Lightning Bolt, okay, oh, just a few commons there, we got Coal, Axe Guard, Spectral Steel, oh, the Dragon Ken Berserker, this is another really interesting card, I'm curious to see if it's going to get played much in the 
aggro red, being able to just pop out those 5-5 five, five late game dragons is pretty good. It's pretty good. It's got some real potential as like a, a cheap card with late game value. Cosmo Elixir. Avalanche Caller. Oh, we got... Oh my goodness, you already see it. Whoa. We got the Erratic Portal. Oh. Oh my god. This is... This is probably the biggest card in the set. I don't know what this is worth, but I feel like this is probably one of the bigger ones from the list. An old Exodus card. Super old Exodus card. Oh, jeez. That's that's a thing of beauty right there. I gotta pause the video and just look that up. Okay, so it looks like it's going for like five bucks. I thought it'd be a little more, but hey, it is what it is. All right, let's go back. Back to opening packs. It's still not a bad pull. And it's like, you know, that's one of those cards that's just a combo enabler to just be able to pop back one of your own creatures to your hand for one mana and then replay it for the ETB effects. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. Neat card. Or save your creatures, all that stuff. It's a cool card. I'm happy to have it. I don't think I own any copies of it, so... Always, always happy to get cards I don't have any of, you know, just for the deck building potential. I really like playing the game. I'm not just a collector. Definitely a collector. But I also really, really, really love playing the game. It's such a fun, strategic game. Great way to kill time, hang out with friends, that sort of thing. So I always want to get cards I don't have. Always happy to pull something that I don't have, even if it's not worth anything. Showdown of the Skulls. Call me, you can call me one of those diamond hand holders. I am not going to sell any of my big cards, like, ever. Every time I ever do, it's instant regret. So, I don't know. Take that for what you will. If you have any old cards or old sets of cards you want to sell... Feel free to hit me up. Always buying stuff. Especially old stuff. Hard to find stuff. Especially collections. Alrighty. Let's get into this one. Always building that MTG position. I have stories. I'll tell a little story where I open a few packs. So, a long time ago. I started playing this game, I think, 94, 95, and I didn't know anything of it. You know, I basically just saw the cards in a in a gaming store and was like, oh, those look cool. I'll buy a pack with my allowance money or whatever. And I think it was 4th edition. I think the first thing I ever bought was 4th edition. And I love the game. I absolutely, like, instantly fell in love with the game. Just seeing the art and everything, I was instantly addicted. And I read the rule books from cover to cover so many times as a kid. I would just I just remember sitting in the back of the car, going for a long car ride, just reading reading the rule books, trying to figure out how to play, because I didn't know anyone that played when I started playing. It was just me. And my cousin was staying with me for, for the summer. And he picked up a few packs and we kinda learned to play together, but we didn't know what we were doing. And he wasn't really that interested. Like as soon as the summer was over, he was like, Yeah, whatever, I'm not playing anymore. But me, I was like, Oh, I'm all in. So I got my brother playing, I got some friends playing. And I made a few friends that already played, which were, which was cool. That's sweet art. And then, uh, yeah, I basically started playing at local tournaments, and it was a, it was a lot of fun. I really, really loved it to stink stroke. So, been pretty addicted ever since. But all those old cards I have, I, I used to have, like, you know, just tons of old cards. The old Tempest block stuff, or the Saga block. And, uh, unfortunately, I don't really, I don't know how to say it other than to just say it. All my cards got thrown away. When I was like 17. So I've been collecting for six years from like 94 to like year 2001. Maybe it was might have been 95, 95 to 2001. I had been collecting, had tons of old cards, you know, probably like tens of thousands of cards in, in today's day after all this spiking. But they literally all got tossed in the trash. My dad went crazy, had a, had a little mental break and was just like, oh, the cards are evil. I'm sent from God. So that really sucked. And, uh, yeah, that still hurts, even to think about it. I've kind of gotten over it now, because it's just been so long. But now, like, that's changed me. That's, like, taught me to protect my cards, basically. Another thing from the list. What do you guys think of Blight Sickle? Uh, it's decent. Gives them Wither. It's not too bad to bring out an equip. Wish it was a little less on the equip cost, but still a cool card. So, yeah, now, like, you know, I started collecting again. started playing a little bit again at one point. After that happened, and then I ended up selling my collection. It was a small collection. You know, it was like a rebuild of my collection. And I got a fair value out of it at that time. And then it was only recently, like the last two years, when I kind of reconnected with some friends. You know who you are. Some of you watch this channel. 
started playing Commander. They taught me about Commander. I didn't know what it was, but it was like, Commander's fun. Commander's a lot of fun. So I just started playing again, started collecting again, and now I'm like trying to rebuild the old collection. So I've got a lot of experience with the game that goes way back, including some tournament experience. I used to play in tournaments a lot. But I don't really do that anymore. I'm not super interested anymore. Path to the World Tree. This is only an uncommon. It seems like it's a really hard uncommon to get. But I don't know if it's that great. Alright, we got Jorn. Jorn is sweet. So, yeah, that's kind of a quick story of my magic history there. I left a lot of the fine details out, but... Man, those were the days. I remember playing in school, playing on the lunch table, all that stuff. Good times. But no regrets. So now, yeah, just trying to... It's going to be a long-term collector. There's no way I'm getting rid of my cards. And I'm always, like, super protective of them now. I don't even like trading. I would rather just go get the card I'm trying to get or something. Or if someone... Sometimes if I trade something, I'll immediately... Only trade it if I can immediately, like, go get another copy. Like, I'll purchase a copy as I'm trading away something. So I just like to keep everything... Now that doesn't go for like commons and uncommons and easy to get stuff. I don't really care about that. Oh my god, look at that pull. It's Coma, the Cosma, Cosmo Serpent. Oh, with the sweet, sweet art. Oh, this is my favorite one. I don't know if there's a full art one, but I, I like this one better. Look at her. Just look at her. Yeah, it, okay. Focus camera. We're trying to have a talk here. That dude, like, trying to fight her, he's got no chance. He's just going to gobble, just, you know? Dude, this card. This card is busted. I love this card. Can't be countered. Generates serpents. You can sack them to make her indestructible. Sack them to tap things. It's oh God, such a strong card. What a mythic pool. I can mess that up. There we go. So that's what, our fourth mythic? Foil demonic gifts. All right. Well, this box is getting better. So, yeah, that's why I say I'll, i got to start putting an email, a business email somewhere on this channel. I don't think I have one yet. But I'll make one or put one down there. The way you guys can get a hold of me and that kind of thing. Alright. So yeah, always listening to feedback. Always hit me up. Feel free. I'm listening. I'm reading. I'm collecting. Three seasons. The Blood Sky Massacre. Is this card good? Creates a Demon Berserker for three. Whenever a Berserker attacks, you draw a card. That's not bad. Okay, I can see this being good in the right Berserker type of deck. And add a bunch of mana for Berserkers for each Berserker. Huh. I've never really noticed that card before. Okay, we got Starnheim Unleashed. Another interesting card. What do we got next? Okay, it's Savala. Oh, and we got a foil. Full Archaea. Just stealing the show. Stealing the spot. That's a that's a thing of beauty right there. My God, and we got something from the list. Whatever. Vanguard of Bremza. What the heck is this? I haven't even seen this card. Whenever you cast a spell that targets, you get a cat with vigilance. Eh, not bad. Not, not a bad little card. I haven't seen that one. Starnheim Unleashed. That was a... Now that's a pack. That is a pack. Double Mythic. It was a double Mythic pack. And we got the uh, special art, Savala. Pretty cool. Savala's not bad. Like a poor man's Golos or something. I don't know. Not a bad card. So, I don't know, I kind of lost my train of thought there. I've been just getting epic pulls. Maybe I should tell more stories. It's like changing my luck. <laughs> but, uh, jeez. Wow, this turned out to be an epic box. Funny how every time every time I do this, like if I talk about myself in these videos, there's always some person that, that's like, Oh, you're so full of yourself. How dare you make a YouTube channel talk about yourself? It's literally YouTube, man. It's... That's the, kind of the point. <laughs> so, I, I don't know what to tell you if you feel that way. But it's very common. I've noticed it on one of my other channels, too. People sometimes just get worried about stuff like that. Ooh, special border, Saruf. Realm Eater. That's pretty cool. What do they call that? Showcase border. And a foil, Shimmer Drift. Cool. And a Grizzly Fate from the list. Put some bears, put a bunch of bears in, just got flashback. I don't know if that's exactly good. I want to make a grizzly bear deck in the face. There's so many like grizzly bear tribal stuff going on recently. Well, I guess not that recently. Modern Horizons had some stuff. 
There's a lot of bear stuff. There's a good bear commander. All right. He gone. Wow. Okay. The old rune stone. Is this getting played in vintage? I don't know. It's a cool card. Nice little sideboard card. All right. All right. There we are. Tyvar Kel with the special art. Oh, that's so. That's freaking cool. Another mythic full art. Shimmer Drift. Carfeld, whoever, foil, just common. All right, we're getting down to the last. Well, we still got quite a few, actually. We got seven packs left, and it's been. Jeez, this has been one heck of a box. And it just keeps getting better. All right, let's see if the trend continues. We're down telling stories. I'm just going to crack the rest of these packs. Code Spell Cleric, another common that people like. People seem to love. All right. Not bold slumber mound. Herald unites the elves. Frost auger. Run him up. Go. Okay, that pack was bust. I'm gonna keep doing it this way. I feel so much safer doing it with the scissors. After ding and bergy. Lesson learned. Alright. Board of Carfell. Cardu's re someone's return. Oh, the Maskwood Nexus. This is another card that's just, I think it's going to stand the test of time from this set. I really do. It's a, it's a super cool card. And it's kind of, oh man, I've seen this, this card alone, like end me in games, just being a creature factory. Oh, and a nice, nice blight step pathway. Oh, that's beautiful. Let's just flip it over. See your step. Oh god, I love I love it. I love these full art flip lands. They're they're very nice. Alright, we got Finn with special art. And Pat to the World Tree foil. Oh! Oh! Another great thing from the list. A regal carousel. Other cats get plus one plus one in lifelink. Whenever ETBs, you get two cats with lifelink. Okay. I feel like that's a decent pull. Let's have a look, shall we? As cool as it is, it's only like a three dollar card, so nothing special. Nothing special. Oh, that's that's a must have though in a cat deck. It is definitely a must have. The old cat decks. Okay, we can close the end. Oh, look at that. Oh, I want a picture that. I want this frame. Just a big like you know, I don't know, what's the standard size for a picture? Two by two or something? Kind of guessing. It's like an actual big one. Actual big one. Should be the slogan for my channel. Okay, we got a Realm Walker. Cool. I was happy to pull that. Valkyrie Harbinger. It's a hard word to say. I always want to say Har Harbringer or something. All right, Flying Life Link. If you gain four or more life, you get an Angel Token. Okay. Not bad. Commander players are going to love that. They always love the token stuff. We got to depart the realm. Foil. All right, play with foil. We're down to the last four packs. All right, I want to hear from you guys. Leave a comment, leave a like. All that stuff would mean a lot to me. I'll try to respond to all the comments, unless you're trolling me. Well, I might respond even if you're trolling me. All right, Foil Island is a nice start. Let's see what we get out of these last few packs here. What do you think of this box? What do you think of this set? Am I right saying this has got really good, strong... A strong speculative set. A good one to hold sealed. Dream Devourer. Foil. Very nice. Very, very nice. Just gonna put it right there. Alrighty. Sit there and open these packs. Foil Alpine Meadow. Oh, one over here. See what we get. A Rune Forge Champion. Cool. Oh, the World Tree. Finally. Finally, we pull a World Tree. I am really happy to get this card. I don't have one, so nice to own a copy of that. I really love that once you get six lands out, it makes all your lands tap for anything. That is just so epic. 
Can you can you focus? You know, sometimes people want to read the card. I guess I can look it up, but it's right here. Yeah, it's it's so cool. As long as you control six or more lands, do the thing. Oh, yeah, it's, it's like I feel like this is required in any five color deck these days. You just gotta have one because it's so good to fix all your mana at six. All right, last two packs. Here we go. Come on. I mean, we've already pulled big money cards. How many Mythics have we got? I've lost track. There's been so many. Berserker. Been one, two, three, four, seven? There's been seven Mythics? Jeez. And we've got some nice stack of rares, too. All right. Well, let's see what else we get. Glorious Protector. Another Icebreaker. Fiora. Pajura, however you say it. Yarl. And a Woodland Chasm. All right, last pack. What are we going to pull, guys? Are we going to get Mythic number eight? Are we going to get something decent from the list? We didn't hit, We didn't really get any decent list pulls, I don't think. Didn't seem like they, they are too great. Village rights. All right, here we go. Let's save her. Nico. Gates. Vega. First Vega pull of the box, I'm pretty sure. Search for glory. Grabs a snow permanent. Or a legendary card. Or a saga. A decent tutor. A decent tutor. And it gains you life. Legendary card. Yeah, I like this. I really like Search for Glory. I think it's a good tutor. Oh, the Reflections. Yes, I actually need one of these, so I'm happy to pull this too. Reflections of Lit Jar. Oh, the Wombo Enabler. Just... Just interesting. Alright, Ice Bind. Foil. Dwarven. Reinforcements. And one final list card. The Spring Jack Shepherd. Just gonna appreciate this art. What is this, one of those Kithkins? Yeah, it's a Kithkin. Kithkin Wizard. Well, we'd like to appreciate the art if you could focus. Logitech? Logitech, where's, what's wrong with your software? Oh, it's just focusing behind. Now we got it. All right. There we go. What does it do? ETB, get a goat for each white symbol. Huh. Interesting. It's just a bunch of... It's, just, it's a goat maker. A goat maker. All right, that's it. I'm going to do a quick pause here. I'm going to add up the, the main thing and just kind of see what this box was worth. So I'll be right back with you. Okay, well, just the Mythics is already at 54. Just the seven Mythics. All right, so it looks like we're going to have one heck of a box. So let's keep going. I'll add up the rest here. Just doing the rares and maybe some of the other things that might seem like they're worth more than a buck. All right, a little financial talk here at the end here. It's pretty interesting, pretty interesting. So I got everything scanned, but I didn't scan a lot of stuff. I scanned the foils that I thought might be worth more. So the foil lands are like sitting around a buck fifty each. Not bad, not bad. But even just these regular snow covered lands are worth like fifty cents each, except for this one foil island. Or I guess the foil island or just the islands, not foil. The islands are worth like a buck or more each. And all these other ones aren't really worth anything, whatever. But it's also, I don't know, just from a speculative standpoint, these snow duels, if they if these don't get reprinted ever, hey, there's a chance they could be worth a, a solid buck or two each. So that's just another thing in each pack that makes this, this these boxes potentially hold great value in the future is all I'm saying with that. I'm not like super impressed with these or anything, but it's just another thing that could potentially make the boxes be worth a lot once they're out of print. That's all I'm saying. All right, so here we go. Here's what we got. So it's about $133 box total. Not bad, not bad. And just depending on where the cards go in the future, uh, we'll see, but I'll just flip through it. The biggest card was Coma, Kea, the Kea Full Art was next, Tyvar Kells at about 10, the Blight, that Full Art Blight Step, the Erratic Portal, Bergy. There's a lot of $5 cards. Bark Channel, Toski, World Tree, Mystic Reflection, Starnheim. So many like 4 to $5 rares. Nexus. So cool thing about this, something I like to do with this is... I'll scan in the set, mark which box it was, and then like later in the future, I can go see what the box, how the box I opened is doing. Because sometimes it'll be like below value. Like I have Modern Horizons boxes I've scanned in from a long time ago. And some of those have gone up like a hundred bucks as the cards change value over time. It's really interesting to see 
how the values change over time of the things. Cause it's one thing, you know, you open, you open a box, you think you might think you did, thought you did good or bad, but that's only in the moment. There's still the whole future of how the card values change. And maybe someone finds some crazy combo chain of smog or something. Uh, and just, you never know what these cards are going to do. I, that's one of the reasons I don't like ever getting rid of them is because you just never know. You sell something for like five bucks one day, uh, two months later, it's worth 20. It's just crazy. Or you sell something or you trade something to a friend for 20 and then it's worth five in the future and they're upset at you or something. I don't know. I just rather just hold on to them till I'm ready to retire or something, you know, and, and ready to actually, I don't know. I, I have actually no plans of ever getting rid of my cards, but it's not like, that's a stupid thing to say. You know, you can't never get rid of things because let's be honest, we're all human. We don't last forever. You got to have some sort of plan. I just don't have any immediate plan of ever getting rid of these. And I don't think I ever will. I would rather pass them on to someone who really cares about this than, than sell them. All right. Well, that's it for this video. Hope you've enjoyed Matt's MTG ownage nation in this Caldine box. I'm going to stop talking and uh, close her out. Bye, guys.